So here we are at a potential new job. People uh, bought this house. They have about eight acres and they're looking for getting this place cut. Very typical paddocks, just overgrown. Probably a little on the big side for the uh, Cub Cadet. Not that the Cub Cadet couldn't cut it. It's just once it gets tall, it folds it over and then leaves a lot of standing uh, stubble after it's cut. So looks like we got good access there. These fields here, I don't know if they want the grass cut too. Certainly could do that with the mower. Bang that out for them. This all looks pretty good, pretty straightforward stuff. No telling if there's any really soft spots. You can see it kind of dips there. Looks like that might carry on that way. This is behind the house. This is uh, probably all day, especially if they want the grass cut in addition to. Nice pole barn. I don't know what they want over there. I don't know if that's theirs. I have to make sure I take a look at that. See how much cutting that's going to require. Probably need to walk to the back and see what's going on back there. So here we are on the back side of this thing here. It looks like a couple small fields that are gonna have to get cut. And ties over into this, which this is some big nasty stuff over here. No telling exactly what this is. Got some small trees that need to come out. No big deal. They aren't going to be happy about losing that. All right, hey folks. So I just walked this property. Overall, uh, not that big of a deal. You know, it's not like some of the others where there was large trees down and a lot of debris to move or things that were too big to run over. Uh, this one, I think, is one that we can cut without a lot of picking up and moving and stuff that's going to slow us down. It's going to take a mower, which, you know, the zero turn is going to be essential. If you look back, they want the grass done too. So doing that with the tractor would just be slow. We can bring the Cub Cadet out here and just whip through that thing and, and uh, bang it out quick. Uh, but it's a good size parcel. And when you look out here, you see the trees. Now you have to start wondering how much cutting is going to have to take place around the trees. And we know trees are what slow this whole process down. The other thing is, over there, I don't know what's in there. It's really grown up and it just makes me suspicious for why it's so much taller than perhaps some of this other uh, area. It's not too much taller than what we see out in the field. So maybe it's just growing kind of at the same pace, but those types of things always make me think septic system or you know something like that that you got to be extra careful of. And the owner just bought this place, so she may not even know what is out and around to warn me. So you know, could potentially get into trouble inadvertently. Uh, so you got to kind of account for that price for that cost, average it over your jobs and hope that uh, everything works, works itself out. There's this little field up here, just, this, just up in the front, kind of opposite the other field that's up in the front. Then you go through the gate and then you go to the back. And uh, she said it's, it's about 80 acres. I, oops, I think it's probably more like 12. And I think this is a uh, two day job for two people. So, um, you know, bush hogging, $1,200 a day, $1,250 a day, uh, 
is the target rate. So she's looking probably about 2000 uh, to do it all, you know. She may not like the price, but that's not my problem. You know, I'm not gonna do it for free. Somebody else out here with a tractor nearby may do it for half that, I don't know, don't care. But um, interesting, so I'll have to send her a written quote because I've gone to written quotes now. And just to protect myself, since I had a problem with this last customer who didn't want to pay, she you know, decided to cancel the job and started lying to the court and stuff like that. So uh, start making up stuff to support her position. So now I'm having to go with uh, written agreements on all these things to uh, to address that. So anyway, um, that's where we're at. Hopefully we'll come back with another video and do a follow up as we're doing the work. So take care and good luck with your business. The new trailer is going to give me a lot of capabilities that I don't have before. I've actually had to order an F450, which has been on order for about a year, to pull the new trailer and the equipment that I plan to the haul. The F250 is just a little too light duty for uh, the, you know, the, the gooseneck and the weights that I'm going to be pulling, which could be up around 20, 21,000 pounds. So it's quite a bit, and the dually will simply handle that much better. Hey everybody, Aaron, Otter Creek Farm and bushhoggingservices.com. I'm out at that job that uh, I talked to you about probably earlier in this video, since I'll probably just piece it all into a single video. I already came out and looked at it. And uh, about 10 acres, but some paddocks and things like that ended up being uh, a job that I got. So, you know, I charged $2,500. I think it was going to take me two days and it was going to require quite a bit of work because of the uh, amount of trees and things of that nature. If you look over my shoulder, you'll see there's some basic fields which I'm cutting today, right? But I spent the first day out here on the zero turn, Cub Cadet uh, um, Pro Z900 or 972, and I did as much as I could on the mower. And the yard here that you see actually required me to go over the entire thing twice. So I was out here, you know, a full day for sure on the mower. Uh, I also did all of these areas here. They all looked like that. I got them down to like this. And now I'm gonna finish it off with the tractor because um, that's just a little bit easier in, in the bush hog, uh, you know, on the tractor, obviously. Over here, this is just the paddock that I did and the value of the zero turn mower, I really can't overstate it enough. It, it really has proven itself to be uh, really beneficial. And uh, when I say beneficial, I mean that in the sense of productivity. Uh, you know, if you, you know from cutting, if you're watching this video, you do, uh, how much time it takes just to edge around a single tree. Well, with the zero turn mower, what I did was I went over the entire property and went around every tree that I could get to and did two mowers wide worth of cutting. And where I could, like here, in between the tree and the fence, where it would be much faster for me to cut with the zero turn, I did it on the zero turn. So now I'm back in the mower uh, with the tractor and I'm here to do the bulk work, which is the big fields, which would not be good for the zero turn. There's just, you know, the gopher tortoise sand mounds and things like that that are chew up the mower. And I'm here to finish the little pockets of vegetation that I just didn't finish, uh, you know, as I was working with the zero turn. The other thing I did with the zero turn is I went around the edge of all of the fences. And uh, that means I don't have to, you know, go really slow with the mower, uh, I'm sorry, the tractor to ensure that I don't hit the fence and tear the tractor up or a fence post or something like that. So by uh, using the zero turn, I'm gonna be out of here in two days, as opposed to maybe two and a half, you know, would be my estimate, which means another trip back, more fuel, you know, all that stuff, which costs a lot of money. So, um, you know, hang on, uh, we'll get some video from inside of the tractor once I get it unloaded and we'll get after this place and hopefully get out of here in maybe about five hours, if we're lucky, and uh, move on to the next job. Hey, just a little side note here, for you guys that didn't grow up on a farm like me, didn't have somebody teach me this stuff. 
Uh, I want to point out a mistake that I was making um, as far as the the ratchets and stuff. First of all, the chains I, were, I was using were twice as long as I needed. Uh, consequently, every time you go to move a chain, you're pulling a lot more through. It's a lot heavier to pick up and move from point A to point B, et cetera, et cetera. So I took all my chains and I cut them in half and I added the hooks. So now I'm dealing with um, half the chain length and I've got twice as many chains. So I, good thing there. The other thing that I figured out was before I was running the chain down through the gusset and then connecting that end to that side and then I was connecting that to the end that came th you know back through the gusset and you're always trying to pull and get tension on it and it's you know you end up sometimes running out of you know space on the on the ratchet thing and you have to start all over again and then I figured out you just hook one end on the on the rail and the other end on the chain it's so simple and stupid but I didn't know you know, and then finally I saw it in somebody else's video. I'm like, oh my God, that's just, you know, that's so practical to do things that way. So if you're doing it wrong or you're struggling with these things, uh, that's an easier way to get it done. Probably, I don't know, a third faster than uh, the old way I was doing it. So good luck to you. Right, so this project is done the fields are done <clears throat> the paddocks are done some areas just not possible to get the uh, tractor in get the bush hog in found a big old stump there lots of stumps got that area cleaned up tractors back on the trailer and we are ready to roll ended up having quite a lot of deadfall out in the front area I really thought it was gonna take a lot longer I made a brush pile for them, cleaned up what I could, moved on. So that wraps this project up. Just got to get back safe and we'll see you on the next one.